Hey, I'm Brandy and welcome to my channel, Brandy Stamps. So excited to have you here. If this is your first time, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you're not subscribed yet, be sure to click that button, especially if you like what I show you today. This video is going to outline four different cards that were actually part of my Brandy Stamps Card Club for November of 2024. So if you're in my card club, welcome. Thank you, it's so good to see all the card club members. You guys are awesome. If you've never heard of it or don't know what this is or wanna learn more, there is a link right in my description that will tell you a little bit more. And today I'm going to walk you through what we made in November so you can get a good idea of the kinds of things that we make each month. So the first thing that I always do is choose a stamp set. And this time we did Light the Year. This is a stamp set from the Holiday Mini Catalog from Stampin' Up. Kind of a lesser known stamp, which is exactly why I chose it. I felt like it hadn't gotten a lot of love on social media and whatnot. So we chose this one and made four amazing cards out of it. Everybody who is in my card club got to make two of each card, so a total of eight cards. I'm going to walk you through the whole thing right now, and hopefully you'll enjoy a little creative inspiration. Let's start with what my card club members received. Everybody got this packet in the mail, and we'll just open this up and see what it's got. I always like to include this little ID sheet just in case you don't do it for a little while, you'll be able to find the right one. I always email out a PDF of instructions or my club members can come back to this video to refer to how to complete the cards. And I've got a little list of the contents here. And so first of all, I always include some product. Oh, it looks like the paper wasn't in here. This is supposed to be in there. So this is what everybody got. Everyone got a quarter pack of the Sentimental Christmas Designer Series paper. So it's two sheets of each kind of paper and they're cut down to six by six. And we're gonna use some of this on the cards, but there'll be lots left over as well. Everyone got a full roll of this cherry cobbler and gold ribbon. Again, we'll use some on the cards, but lots will be left over. Everybody got this little sponge dauber, which we'll be using on our cards, and everyone got the white loose snowflakes, which actually sold out right after we ordered everything for the card club. And so these are kind of a hot commodity. I'm excited I was able to include these for you guys. And we're gonna do some really cute stuff with those. So these products total approximately $20 in value, and I always have about $20 in product included with the card club packet. Now, of course, other than that, you're going to get the four different card kits. In each one of these, you can see a lot of care has gone into this die cutting and prepping and sorting and making sure you have every single thing needed. There's always a little specialty paper, um, maybe some other ribbons included. And in each of these packets is enough to make two of each card with envelopes. So eight nice cards that you'll be able to send out plus $20 in product. My card club members paid $34 to get this packet of stuff. In addition to that, we always have the stamp set that we're using, kind of the featured set of the month. This is the one that I chose for this time and the card club members were able to add this on to their club if they wanted to. They could order it themselves if they wanted to. They could pick a different set if they wanted to. So if there's a different Christmassy set you wanted to use instead, absolutely pull the stamps off your shelf and get those inky, that's part of the purpose of Card Club. Here are the ink colors that I'm using this month. You can pull out these exact colors or similar colors if you have them. This is kind of a dark red cherry cobbler, kind of a greeny dark blue um, shaded spruce and then a darker yellow crushed curry, any yellow could probably work. And then a nice dark brown early espresso. Other than that, you'll always wanna have the basics. You're going to want a paper trimmer. You're going to want scissors. I like to use a bone folder to get those nice sharp creases. And then pull out your favorite adhesives. I always use a lot of mini glue dots. I like to use Seal Plus for paper to paper. Here are my mini and regular dimensionals. And then some liquid glue. I use this this time for those little snowflakes. It works really well for that. So pull out your basic stamping supplies. Here's something fun that I included in everybody's packet this month. I did just a little gift. Christmas time is coming up, so I thought it would be fun to show a little thankfulness to my card club members. 
So this is just a little tiny lantern. It's about three, three and a half inches tall. And it has a little switch here that turns it on so it glows. And then I just added a little sprig here to the top and some of our Stampin' Up! ribbon, hoping this season is bright and beautiful. Get it? Bright and beautiful. And um, this little tag came from the dies that are called Unbounded Love. And then I think this greeting came from a set that's called Peaceful Season. It has a lot of greetings in it and some of them are really small, but look how well that worked for this set. And I thought that was kind of the perfect little gift for this Light the Year set. So it kind of went with our whole theme for the month. So I hope my card club members enjoyed that. And if you're not in card club, you could try putting something like this together. It was a cute little easy gift. And I gave it to some of my friends and family who came for Thanksgiving too. Just kind of a fun little cute thing. For the very first card, you'll want to pull out this little Christmas tree paper. And you're going to need two pieces because you're making two cards. The pieces are three by five and a quarter. So this paper is at six by six. So if I just do a three inch cut, now I've got two of these that are three inches. I can turn the other direction and just go five and a quarter. You'll also wanna open up your cherry cobbler and gold ribbon. You'll want two pieces that are 11 inches each. And here is the card kit for card number one. So let's pull everything out of here. And I'm going to actually split this into two piles because at home you're going to make two of everything. But here on the video, I will just show one for time's sake. And you can always pause the video to do them both. So here we are with all the pieces for card number one, just for one of them. And let's go ahead and get started putting this together. So the designer series paper is going to go on the front of this card right in the center. So I'll use a little seal plus just up the sides. And then I always like to use my grid sheet to help me kind of get things straight. I'm not being terribly picky about it, but you know, I don't want to get it down and then realize, oh, that was terribly crooked because it's pretty hard to move things that are glued down with seal plus. So. so there's that. And then let's come over to this little pine cone. I've got the two pine cone stamps and the early espresso ink pad. And when you stamp this pine cone, you're going to do it in two different layers. Let's demonstrate on the envelope. So what you're going to do is take the bottom, like the more filled in layer, stamp off on your scratch paper, and then come over and stamp kind of a lighter pine cone on your project. Then when you do the second layer, this is the more detailed layer, I'll just leave the same color of ink at full strength and just come and stamp that kind of right here. Let's try that again on the die cut. In your kit, you've received this little die cut pine cone and you don't wanna lay it on a white surface to stamp it. So I'm just using the back of my card base. I'm not going to actually get any ink on here. I'm just using it so that it's easy to see the edges of my white die cut so that I can come and line up and come right down onto it. Now I'll go with my darker Bring it down kind of more toward the front of the pine cone to get this design lined up well. Just like that. I'm going to do it one more time just on the piece that goes on the inside of the card. I always like to stamp, if I put a piece on the inside of the card, I usually stamp it just to get it cute. Set those aside and then come over to the circle. This is one of the deckled circle dies and we'll do a little bit of stamping on this as well. Also in early espresso. So here's our greeting, send in love and light this time of year. We're going to bump that down to the bottom of this circle, pretty much as far as you can go without going off the circle. And make sure you've got it nice and straight. Okay. 
come in with the smaller of the two lanterns, ink that up. And when you do this one, you're going to make it straight above the words, but bring it as far up as you can on the circle without going off the edge. We want to space here to be able to stamp some of those sprigs and things. Okay, grab your cherry cobbler ink pad and your cute little candle image, and this is going to stamp right in the lantern, just like that. Okay, now grab your crushed curry ink pad and the little sponge dauber, and let's give this candle just a little bit of a glowy flame, just like that. Okay, last bit of stamping. We're actually using all four ink pads on this card, so that'll get your money's worth, right? And we're going to come in, there are two different sprigs with a similar look here, and we're going to stamp one on each side. So just kind of fill the space between the words and the lantern. And it's okay if you overlap onto the lantern a little bit. Okay, grab the little piece of linen thread that I gave you, and we're just gonna tie an air bow. So to do that, I'm going to go about halfway up, so here's my halfway point, and make a loop on the left side of halfway, wrap around with the other side, and then just do it in the air, but do it like you would tie your shoelaces. Okay, so once you've got kind of a cute little bow, we could probably adhere these small bits with either mini glue dots or liquid glue. This little die cut here with the berries is so very, very skinny. I'm just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on here. Place that one kind of on the left. Sorry, by left I meant right. Look, I laid it on the right side. Do as I say, not as I do. No, do as I do, not as I say. Hmm. I went opposite on that age old saying, didn't I? What does that even mean? Okay, I think what that usually means is I might be making bad decisions but you shouldn't, you should do the right thing, which is what I'm about to tell you. Okay, I'm trying to say and do the right thing, but here we go. So we got two little sprigs kind of layered right on top of each other that go off to the right. And now off to the left side, I'll go ahead and use a couple of mini glue dots for this guy because I want it to pop up just a little, so I'm stacking them. I don't want it to pop up as much as a dimensional would do but just a little. So I'll put it over here. Don't want to cover the candle or the words too much, but just kind of have it go off to that side. And then let's trim one little arm off that bow. And we can use a tiny dot of liquid glue to attach that. Just kind of put that right at the intersection there on the base of the pine cone, right where those boughs and the bow and the pine cone come together. Okay, so we've got this piece kind of put together. Let's do a little bit of assembly. Here's the front of our card again. This is our piece for the inside, so let's get that done. And then for those of you guys who do Christmas cards, how many Christmas cards do you typically send out? I'm just curious because my list grows every year and I don't know, maybe I just have a hard time like I want everybody on this list, but goodness, I'm sending out like hundreds at this point. And honestly, I'm like, do you want a Christmas card? Just tell me in the comments and I will send you one too because Christmas cards are fun. I love it. 
So when I was cutting these kits for you guys, you better believe I cut several extras so I could make a bunch of these cards and some of my friends will be getting them. So all I did is take about 11, 12 inches of this ribbon and I built kind of the hope shaped ribbon here. So it loops up and back down. So when this goes flat, it'll kind of be something like that in the envelope. But then, you know, when the person takes it out of the envelope, it pops up a little. And then I used dimensionals to hold the ribbon down in place. Do you see that? And I did that because I know that I'm going to be bringing this whole piece and putting it right on top of here. And so that will give me the chance to double duty these dimensionals. They'll also pop up the middle. So we'll just put a few on the outer edge here. And we'll peel both, all four of these guys, all four of these guys. And get this arranged right about like that. Okay, cute. Now one more finishing touch. Here are those loose snowflakes. Let's pop these guys out. There's a couple of different sizes in here, and so you can carefully pick out what you'd like to use if you want to. And I'm just gonna place about three on one side and two on the other side. Let's find a real tiny one. There's one. Okay. I've got two kind of over here, three over here. I would place them first where you like them. Pick one up, put a tiny dot of glue and lay it back down. If you have a hard time handling these, the take your pick tool might help. If they're just too little or you've got nails that get in the way, all valid reasons. The take your pick tool has that putty end and you might need to kind of help it let go of the snowflakes so it'll stay on the glue. And there we go. This will just take a few minutes to dry, so don't put any pressure on it right away. Set it aside just for five or 10 minutes and this card is ready to go in the mail. Card number one. For card number two, I have separated out my kit, so I have one of everything. You're going to want a piece of four inch ribbon and then this little candle paper is two and three quarters by four. So I've prepped all of that for us. On this one, let's start with the card base. The card base is going to do something different and cool. You'll notice that the front side of this card, all of these little score lines on it, and on your PDF, you've got the complete measurements with the lines for where to score this. So if you want to remake any of these cards, you can see exactly how to do that. So on the first score line, it's over here, we're gonna fold the card open. Okay, and then we've got a little bit inside of here and we're going to glue that part shut. So it's kind of a little book binding approach. So we'll shut that and it's glued shut. So it just opens from here over. And then this piece, we're going to fold back again, just like this. And we've got a second piece of white that we'll glue right on here. So let's line up these two edges and glue on our extra layer of white. So I put seal plus on here and now I'll just bring it over all the way, line up that corner and that corner. And there we go. So here's kind of the basic card design. So now on these two edges, that's where our mercury patterned vellum is going to go. And you know how vellum will often show the adhesive through. So what we're going to do is flip this over and you'll see some white area. That's where the gold printing is. We're going to put some dots of the liquid glue, but we're only going to place them on these white areas and you don't need tons and tons to have it stick just you know put a few dots 
spread them out all over the space of the strip. Okay, let's flip this over. This should adhere right in this little space with a border around it. Like so. And then let's do the other side too. Now on this center piece, that's where our little candle paper is going to get adhered. Ooh, look how cute that back is. Love it, little snowflakes and stars. Okay. Now let's come over to this little tag piece and we're going to do a sentiment stamped in our early espresso. It'll say all is bright and we just want to bump it kind of all the way to the right side on this small tag so that we have plenty of room for the rest of our images. Make sure you clean your candle stamp because we had used it in the red ink and we're going to stamp it now in shaded spruce and do a couple of candles here. Again, with the crushed curry and my sponge dauber. Just tap a little glow on there. This piece of ribbon is going to get folded in half, just like a little V shape, and it'll come from behind on this tag right here. So I think I want it about that long. I'll just pull it in that far on the tag. And then we can use dimensionals to hold it down where we want it. I mean, you can glue it to the tag and then put dimensionals as well, but why when the dimensionals can do both jobs? So this is a very small tag and it ends up with five dimensionals, but remember some of them are doing an extra job of holding the ribbon in place. And now we're going to place this on the front of our card, but kind of down low here. about there. Ooh, you know what? While well, we had our candle stamp out, we should have done our envelope too. And of course, this cute little glow. Doesn't that just add everything? Sponge jobbers are so fun for little details like that. Again, with our finishing touch of the snowflakes, I'm going to do kind of a larger one and then I always have to dig a little to find the tiny babies. They look so cute on the card and I love when our accessories have the varied sizes. It looks so good when you have a few of the same image but in different sizes. So again, liquid glue and I'll just lift up my snowflake, put a tiny dot of glue and down again. And there we go, card number two. Okay, here we go, card number three, and I've got all the pieces to do one of the cards out here. And this is the piece from the designer series paper pack. Make sure you cut it so you've got this kind of foliage and the candy canes on the bottom and the right side. This is three and three quarters by five. And we're going to actually stamp right on this, oops, right on this layer, which I love the look of. We'll just use wishing you peace, joy, and light. And we'll stamp it right up here in the left corner. And while we have our green ink out, let's also stamp this bow die. So again, I'll use one of my other scraps to be kind of a backing to help me see exactly where I'm stamping. Get my 
shaded spruce ink here and try to stamp just right onto the bow die. And while I've got this stamp, I'll stamp on the piece that goes on the inside of the card and on the envelope too. Okay. More stamping. Let's grab the early espresso now. And here's our lantern die cut. We are going to ink this up. Just press it right down on there. These stamps are fun. They have a lot of great texture to them, which gives them, I don't know, just extra interest. And then make sure and wash your candle stamp again. We've used it now in red and green. And now we're going to hop over and stamp it in brown. So we'll just match our lantern here. Right in there. And you guessed it. A little bit of glow on the candle. Crushed curry. Okay, let's see how this card is going to come together now that we've got our stamping done. So early espresso card base, very dark color. That's why we included a piece here for the inside of the card. Seal plus, just up each side for that and just line it up so it has a little edge all the way around. Okay, we have a couple layers for the front. First, put down the Poppy Parade. That gives it a really fun, bright edge. Now we'll lay down our designer paper layer. And now the lantern is going to go kind of right on here. Just kind of size up where your greeting ended up, how your work, how your design looks here in the corner. Put a few dimensionals onto the back of your lantern. Kind of place it right here. And then we've also got this cute little bow. Let's get a glue dot onto that and attach it here at the base. Again, let's finish up with some snowflakes. These are you these are basically looking cute on every single project this time. We'll do a couple bigs, one of the smalls. Lift, tap, and stick. And there we go, card number three. For card number four, you're going to want two different pieces of designer paper for each card, but they actually are the same because it's the front and back of the same paper. So take both of your squares of designer paper and find these little two deer. You're gonna cut it at three inches with the two deer still on here. It cut off my little ankle, but that's perfect. It still ends up great. And so then you can turn it and cut it at four inches and get that three by four piece. You can cut both of those at the same time right in your paper trimmer. And then take the scraps that you have and flip it over and cut these snowflake pieces from the back. This one is two by five and a half, okay? And then you'll want 11 inches of ribbon and we'll come over and check out our card. So let's make sure and wash our wishing you peace and joy and light. We're going to use that one again, this time on the Cherry Cobbler ink. So tap in here. You've got just a little scrap paper of white and you really only need the Peace and Joy part. So we'll stamp that right here. Later we'll be cutting those out for what we need. 
and then take your shaded spruce and you have these two kind of mistletoe stamps. Again, they layer together and we're going to use a little bit darker background so we can see what we're doing. Let's get the bigger, kind of more filled in image first and stamp off so that when we stamp on our sprig here, it'll be sort of a lighter shade. Okay. And while we've got it, let's do the piece for the, oh no, there's no piece for the inside here. We're gonna do the envelope. Okay, so just like that. Set this aside and now let's ink up the shaded spruce. And you don't have to get this exactly lined up, but you can kind of look at the tip and kind of look at the other tip and stamp it over the top in the darker shade. Okay, it gives it kind of some little detail on there. Let's do the same for the envelope. Okay, let's set all of that aside to dry for a minute and jump over to our little deer paper. This one is going to get layered onto a cherry cobbler. Give it a cute little red frame. And then we'll bring this ribbon right around it. Bring your two ends over closer to the right side here. If I want my knot right about here, I'm gonna make sure both of those ends are similar length over here. Then I'm going to tie a square knot, which means I'll start by putting the right one on top. So I'm holding them kind of both upward. The right one's on top. Let it jump under, pull and tie a bow. Now we bring both ends up again, and this time I'm putting the left one on top. Send that one under. I'm kind of using one of my other fingers to hold the first knot that I did while I did all that. Now we'll pull this one tight. And a square knot is nice because it gives you this nice flat middle and it makes these ends that go out the same direction as your original ribbon line. So a granny knot would be the opposite where you go right over right both times and that will give you ends that go up and down, you know, in contrast with your line of, stand of your ribbon. So there's our little square knot. Now this card folds open from the top like that. So let's make sure we've got it with the fold side up. Again, I'm using my grid sheet to help me get this straight. So I'm going to put some adhesive on the back of the snowflake paper. And I want it to be all the way across the middle here. Make sure it comes straight across like that. Okay, this piece is going to go onto the front of the card and it'll glue with dimensionals and it should be right about, right about a half inch from this edge of the card. So let's flip over. Okay, let's take our mistletoe sprig that we had cut and well, we stamped it onto a die cut. Put a couple of mini glue dots on that. And I'm going to place it over here on the right side of the card, probably about halfway on and halfway off of this designer paper. And then we'll grab our Peace, Joy and Light and what I'm going to do is just cut little straight lines. Let's get the joy. We can give them kind of slanty edges, make it a little cutesy. So don't lose track of that. It's just one little joy. And then let's get the piece. Don't stress about if these are straight. That is not going to be the focus of this card. Just kind of cute little message to read. They'll probably really be looking at the deer. 
And then let's come right in here, get our, and So I'm going to make it say, peace and joy. You can do this however you want, like kind of ski wampus them or make them look straight. I'm going to let the word joy kind of sit right over the edge of that mistletoe so that it kind of settles it in place. You can use rolled mini glue dots to do this, or you can use mini dimensionals. Either one works great. Okay, so here's how that looks with my little rolled up mini glue dots underneath it. It gives them a little bit of dimension. They're not popped way, way up there. And then for my snowflakes this time, I'm going to pull out three. So let's get I got a couple little guys. And let's do a bigger one for right here. Same trick again. I really find this relaxing and this works really well for sequins too. So if you ever get any loose sequins from Stampin' Up, they do really well with this kind of lift and place technique and it takes just moments. And we've got card number four. Okay, we've been working hard. We've made four cards. Should we admire them all together? Here we are, four adorable cards created with the Light the Year stamp set. I really enjoyed putting these together. I hope you guys love them too. I hope you'll consider checking out my card club if you haven't done that before, because putting these cards together every month as a group is so much fun. To all my card club members, happy holidays. Thank you so much for stamping with me, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.